and they will wait. He even says they will wait. They wanted, they wanted Osama bin Laden to wait because they have long-range plan to destroy America from within. On the contrary, there's only one way open, onward and upward. This doctrine was called Al-Fatah, translated literally as the opening. In simple geopolitical terms, Fatah was the conquest of non-Muslim lands. And they said, we won't allow it to be reversed. You reverse it, we are at war with you. And they don't get their weapons and come after you. They infiltrate our universities, our colleges, put their oil money into our universities, and then they get to dictate what our history books say about the Arab people. And they write out everything that they don't want in there. It was the legitimization of the expansion of the Islamic State. It was called occupation. It was perceived as a divinely authorized march into the land outside the state. Invasion has a name in the area, Arabic as Tia. Occupation has another, Atilal. Both have negative connotations which would invite legitimate reprisal from the conquered peoples. Hence, the inventors of the word Fatah were proposing a new term that means practically both invasion and occupation. They're going to come and occupy. They're buying up everything in America they can buy. You do know that, don't you? When Mary and I went on that vacation last year, most of the stations we stopped at were Arab-owned. It was an Arab I was paying my, for my gas. As a matter of fact, Mr. Jimmy had one of them. They thought my husband was one of them. And if he was telling my husband around the corner from us that he hates he hate Americans, not knowing my husband was American too. Yeah. And like, well, I don't blame him for hating Americans. Yeah, exactly. Americans are a bunch of heathens. Yeah. <laughs> but without saying it, it was often connected to a higher aim, such as at the service of Allah, religion, or UMA, U-M-M-A, connection that both rendered the concept legitimate and provided an emotional component in its adherence. To perform Fatah in the 7th century was perfectly legitimate. This started in the 7th century, excuse me. It was perfectly legitimate in the eyes of the followers of the caliphs. The caliph was the man who took the office of Muhammad. It was passed down to him. As if the lands of Dar el Harb were awaiting the liberators, Fatah was mubah, or per permissible if conducted by the proper authorities, which in those days meant the supreme commander of the believers of the caliph. Now, hold on, let me see if I got something else in this I want to read to you. Let me show you what he says. This is a man that knows their thoughts, their minds, and how they think. It's kind of scary stuff. See if I... Yeah. The USHQ, U-S-H-Q, Al-Mut, A-L-M-O-U-T, is called Love of Death, is the backbone of suicide bombing and gives terrorism its most frightening firepower. Indeed, once the fear of death is subtracted from political planning and public concern, there is no limits to the power of jihadism. Hence arose the concept of ishtishad, translated hastily as martyrdom in Western languages. But the concept is different from what martyrdom means or has meant historically to them. It's talking about the way they look at things. They don't think like we think. In Christian religious history, a martyr was a person who sacrificed himself or herself to give witness to their beliefs. Linguistically, the word comes from mort or mort or dying for. Is tishhad, let me write that, I-S-T-I-S-H, I S. T I S H A A D. Ishtishad 
includes dying for one's belief, but it also includes taking other people's lives. They call that martyrdom when they kill you and themselves together, and that's honorable to them. That's why they're not going to think anything about coming over here and blowing up coliseums or blowing up dams or or blowing up a city or blowing up, setting off a, a nuclear warhead in New York City. That's right. It takes them to paradise. That's honorable. Dying for religion is martyrdom. Killing as well as being killed for religion is the jihadi concept. Yeah, we don't equate that, do we? That's why Osama bin Laden said, Americans love life. We love death. He said, he's got that written several times in these books. The philosophical difference is enormous. In history, both Muslims and Christians at times have twisted the theological understanding of sacrificing one's lives. Caliphs and emperors, imams, which is their saviors, and bishops use martyrdom and is tishad at will depending on geopolitical situation. Other religions struggled with similar challenges. Dying for one's nation, mission, ethnicity, or ideology was dominant in war rhetoric for centuries. But with the modern era, the international community has settled on a vast consensus. Regardless of religion interpretation, they have agreed on the separation of theology from international law. Religious debates on these matters should remain in the religious realm only. Life and death, in the sense of war and peace, are matters to be decided by natural governments and global society. In short, in the present international tech context, individuals and political movements may not legislate or license killing, suicide, or massacres based on divine theological and ideological grounds. In this respect, democracies and jihadism are irreversibly opposed. That may be what international law says. They say, we don't go by that. It's an honor to kill you and me and myself at the same time. They're going to think nothing about this. There are over a billion Arabs in the Middle East. Mr. Uh, Fares says, that 15% of them are ready to come and get behind the destruction of America. That means 150 million are willing to be in their army of terrorism. 150 million. That's half the population of America. We don't have 150 million in our army, do we? No. That's unheard of. That's a 150-million-man army that's willing to strap on bombs and come over here. And they have schools training these people at all times. Huh? Isn't it? You think they're gone for good? He brings out in here that the, there's a group of them, the more ardent of these, do not like it because Osama bin Laden came when he did. They wanted him to wait because they have a long-range plan where they intend to annihilate America from within. We are headed towards... They couldn't attack us on our shores with armies, but they don't have to do that. We've got something serious going on in the world. And I keep saying, I read these books on the Middle East, and these guys are professors, they're... They're investigative reporters. They're men that put their lives in jeopardy. Uh, did I bring that book? I had one.